There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. that we're about to watch could be our journey. You're in a kind of limbo. You're neither here nor there. You're in the middle between the two, the real and the shadow. We exist, of course, but how? In what way? As we believe? As flesh and blood human beings? How can you be real when you're made of wood? Fictional characters come alive. They come alive so vividly that they make decisions of their own. A playwright may have worked out some kind of move for them, but they refuse to do it. They become so strong that sometimes they take over the whole story. I've been remembering about something I read or heard about a long time ago, about two parallel worlds that exist side by side, and each of us has a counterpart in this world. I'm your memory, your conscience. I'm every one of your aspirations and recollections. I'm every one of your failures and defeats. I also wear the wreaths of all your victories. I'm what you call the alter ego. We have two faces, one that we wear and the other that we keep hidden. Just how normal are we? Just who are the people we nod our hellos to as we pass on the street? People, they're the same all over. I'm sure that when God made human beings, he developed them from a fixed formula. As long as they've got minds and hearts, that means they have souls. That makes them people, and people are alike. Is that good, being like everybody? Isn't that the same as being nobody? When everyone is beautiful, no one will be, because without ugliness, there can be no beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, in this year or a hundred years hence, on this planet or wherever there is human life, perhaps out amongst the stars. Earth, it's a race of men struggling for survival. It isn't a place of all beauty. We may yet have wars, and there still remains prejudice. And as long as men walk, there will be angry men, jealous men, unforgiving men. But it has one thing. It lets every man be his own master. Some people aren't built for competition, or big pretentious houses they can't afford, or rich communities they don't feel comfortable in or country clubs they wear around their neck like a badge of status. Handsome, prosperous, the picture of success. The man who has achieved every man's ambition. Beautiful children, beautiful home, beautiful wife. Idyllic. If you're a success, you're bound to think it's a dream. If not, you think it's a nightmare. Sometimes I'd like to escape, away from this turmoil, to some simpler existence. I had been living in a dead run, and one day I knew I had to come back here. I had to come back and get on a merry-go-round, and eat cotton candy, and listen to band concerts. I had to stop and breathe and close my eyes, and smell and listen. Beautiful, these sort of places where there are no books to keep, where I'm not a little man, 
with no future and no past. We are all travelers. The trip starts in a place called birth and ends in that lonely town called death. Every man is put on earth condemned to die. Time and method of execution, unknown. This is the comeuppance awaiting every man when the ledger of his life is opened and examined. Why does a man have to die? The world goes on for millions of years. And how long is a man's life? A handful of years and then an eternity down under the ground. Why does he have to die almost the moment he's been born? Only if a man lived forever could there be any point to living at all. Clocks are made by men. God creates time. No man can prolong his allotted hours. He can only live them to the fullest. And perhaps across his mind, there'll flit a little errant wish that a man might not have to become old. And he'll smile then too, because he'll know it is just an errant wish. Some wisp of memory not too important, really. Some laughing ghosts that cross a man's mind. An observation as to the psychological nature of man. He's a frightened breed. Being frightened is a normal, natural human function, just like breathing. It's how you react to fright. That's what really counts. I don't want any of the outside world coming in. It doesn't have to exist if I shut my eyes. If I shut my eyes, it all disappears. If I wish hard enough, I can wish it all away. How thin a line separates that which we assume to be real with that manufactured inside of a mind? The human imagination is often weird. Sometimes it means salvation. The fear has left me now. I'm numb. I have no feeling. It's as if someone had pulled out some kind of plug in me. And everything, emotion, feeling, fear, has drained out. And now I'm a cold shell. I'm conscious of things around me now. The vast night. The stars that look down from the darkness. Up there, in the vastness of space, in the void that is sky, up there is an enemy known as isolation. As a race, we're unaccustomed to charity. Brutality is a far more universal language to us than an expression of friendship from outer space. I shot an arrow into the air. It landed I know not where. Nursery rhyme for the age of space. People are afraid because they subvert every great thing ever discovered. Every fine idea ever thought. Every marvelous invention ever conceived. They subvert it. They make it crooked and devious. Then too late, far too late. They ask themselves the question, why? By then it's too late. Everything is too late. I remember the earth. I remember it as a place of color. I remember that in the autumn the leaves changed, turned different colors, red, orange, gold. I remember streams of water that flowed down hillsides and the water was sparkling and clear. 
I remember clouds in the sky, white billowy things, floated like ships, like sails. And I remember night skies like endless black velvet. Night was a quiet time when the earth went to sleep, kind of like a cover that had pulled over itself. It was a darkness that felt like a cool hand just brushed back tired eyes. And there was snow on the winter nights, gossamer stuff, floated down and covered the earth, made it all white and cool. And it was good then. It was right. What is there left that I can believe in? The desert and the wind? The silence? Or myself? I am a human being. I exist. And if I speak one thought aloud, that thought lives. As long as people talk about you, you're not really dead. As long as they speak your name, you continue. A legend doesn't die just because the man does. These men wrote about life and about the dignity of the human spirit and about love. The strange and wondrous mysticism that is a simple act of living. We believe it to be man's greatest weapon against the devil who is the father of all lies. According to the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth. Somewhere in between heaven, the sky, the earth, lies the twilight zone.